ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ದೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿಗುಣಾರ್ಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯಜಾತರ ಮುನಿ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜಸ್ಯ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶಿಗುಣಾರ್ಣವಂದೇ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಮಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯದೈಕಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜಸ್ಯ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾಯ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರಿ ಭೋಗ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೋಸಿಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸೂತ್ರಸ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ದಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ಅಕಾರಂ ಇರವತ್ತಂಜಾಮಕ್ಷರಮಾಯಿ ಜ್ಞಾನವಾಜೀವಮಾಯಿರಿತ್ತೇ ಆತ್ಮ ವೈಚ್ಛುಲ್ಲು ಹಿರದೆ ಇದಾನ್ ಸಮಷ್ಟಿವಾಚಕ ಜಾತ್ಯೇಕವಚನಂ ತಾಲ್ ಆತ್ಮ ಜ್ಞಾತಾವೆನ್ನ ದೇಹತ್ತಿಲ್ ವ್ಯಾವೃತ್ತಿ ಶುಲ್ಲಿತ್ತಾಯಿತ್ ಸೊ ದಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ಆನ್ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ಅಕಾರಂ ಇರವತ್ತಂಜಾಮ ದಿಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಬ್ರೀಫ್ಲಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಅಕಾರಂ ಇರವತ್ತಂಜಾಮ ಅಕ್ಷರಮಾಯಿ ಜ್ಞಾನವಾಚಿಯುಮಾಯಿ ಇರಕ್ಕೂ ಸೊ ದಿ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ದಿ ಫೈವ್ ತ್ರೀ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಅಷ್ಟಾಕ್ಷರ ಮಹಾಮಂತ್ರ ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಓಂ ದಿ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಈಸ್ ನಮಃ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ ಥರ್ಡ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾರಾಯಣಾಯ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ದೆಮ್ ದಿ among the three alphabet come words that consist you constitute the first word namely om <coughs> it is a u and ma among them makara denotes the jeevatma or individual soul <coughs> so it is in the fitness of things that the makara is denoted by the 25th alphabet among the consonants as i was mentioning that here in the sanskrit varnamala you have a total of 48 alphabets if you would like if it is robert to call it as an alphabet but we are all familiar with the words so i am referring to referring to it as alphabet so among them first you have a a i i u u r r r a o i o so 13 vowels then am and ah are known as both yogavahas as well as ayogavahas so you have 15 so these 15 together are considered to be the vowels then you have 33 uh consonants or vyanjana sahas they are known so these consonants constitute of the five vargas or five what do you know what is vargiya vyanjana they are called that means classified consonants in the sense they are classified into five divisions or categories based on the <coughs> place of their birth in the speech box so they are known as vargiya vyanjanas that is a ka ka ga 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 trans palatal lingual stabial dentals etc and among them the 25th alphabet is makara which is 
Makaram Virutanda Maksharama Jnana Vatiyama Irukum. So it is also derived on basis of the two roots, Manu Avabodhani and Managyani or something like that, which we explained in the previous class. Further, there, is, there are a few issues that are explained by Swami Manavana Mamani. <coughs> It says, Vijnana Atma Purusha Vijnata Ramare Kena Vijani Atyan Girapadiye Jnana Swarupa Numai Jnana Gunaka Numai Irikira Atma Vichundu Hiradi in Jai. So, this, all these things were explained in the earlier class. So, I will not repeat it. <coughs> then the 67th Sutra is taken. Ididan Samashtiva Chakam. Kil chunna sheshatum, sadharana, sarvasadharana mahe ale, trividhat mavergatim, igile shulave into hai ale, rudichira, gidadan samashtiva the kum in me, about the ipadi, atmava, atmava the kamana in makarandan, atma samashtiva the kum in day. So, what is being mentioned here is. So there is the concept of Samashti and Vyashti in the Indian philosophical systems. So Samashti means what we call a, to put it in a very crude manner what we call as bulk. Vyashti means individual. So suppose I, I will give an example. <laughs> Suppose I had to, you have a pack of biscuits. In the pack of biscuits, there are, say in one pack of biscuits, there might be 10, 10 pieces of biscuits. Suppose, suppose I want to prepare one biscuit at home. Then what do I do? I go through some process and all and prepare a biscuit. So that is Vyashti Srishti. Or you do it in individually. You may, you may, uh, you may put some flour and other things and uh, bake one piece of biscuit in an oven that is at home. But when it is prepared in a factory, millions of pieces of biscuits are prepared. <laughs> are manufactured within a period of one or two hours. That is one way of explaining it. So Samashti means bulk, Vyashti means individual. That is only one way of explaining. I am not saying this is how it applies when we talk about Vyashti Srishti and Samashti Srishti. Similarly, when we talk about Vyashti Srishti and Samashti Srishti, Samashti Srishti means the Overall tattva or the overall inherent nature, for example, water or earth or whatever it is. When it is produced in a mass manner, then it is known as samashti srishti. Whereas if it is produced individually in small quantities, it is known as vishti srishti. In this context, when you say makara denotes the atma, so does it denote any one Atma or Atma in general? When this question is raised, then it, he says, Samashtiva Chakam. It refers to all the individual souls in general. What do you mean by all the individual souls? The meaning is, the souls are categorized into three categories. They are divided into three categories. Namely, Baddha, bonded souls. Mukta means those who have, who were bonded earlier but have attained liberation or moksha. That is why they are known as Mukta, liberated souls. When you say liberated, it implies that earlier they were not liberated. That means earlier they were bonded, under bondage like we are in this state now. But by the grace of God, they have become liberated. 
and one more class of jivatmas who are known as nitya muktas eternally liberated which means they never they have never had any relationship or anything to do with the material world nor do they have anything nor will they have to do anything with the material world in future also so they do not have any anything to do with this material world in the past present and they shall not have anything to do with the material world in future also they are known as nitya muktas which means which refers to ananta garuda vishak sena adaya ananta garuda vishak sena and others so they are known as nitya muktas so this ma makara refers to the jivatma which essentially means it refers to all types of jivatma so that they are buddhas bonded souls or liberated souls or eternally liberated souls all three are <clears throat> deemed to have mentioned to have been mentioned by the word ma so therefore it is said idanam samashti vachakam then jatye kavachanam then the question is raised there is a concept of what is known as jatye kavachanam in sanskrit language and literature ekavachanam samashti vachakam amo en girashankaile arulichaihira now you are mentioning that the makara refers to the individual soul so when i say individual soul it is in singular number you have two types of numbers singular and plural in english and other indian languages whereas in sanskrit you have three numbers singular dual and plural so if it is if you have to denote an object that is one in number you have to have you have to say singular if it is two you have what is known as dvivachana or dual they take this exists only in sanskrit it does not exist in any other language as far as i know i don't know whether it exists in greek and latin or not but dual number does not exist in any indian language nor any foreign language like indian english etc that much i am sure but whether it exists in some classical language like greek or latin i am not sure so you have to denote an object that is one in number you use singular number in sanskrit you have dual to denote two and in then for the, for some number some object which is more in number more than two you have plural whereas in indian languages and other for other indian languages and foreign languages have, there also you have only singular and plural no question of dual ekavachana and bahuvachana so for that which is one you use ekavachana more than one you use bahuvachana but the peculiarity and uniqueness both underline both peculiarity peculiarity and uniqueness of sanskrit languages it is called what is known as jivachana why only sanskrit has it why not other languages that is a very deep uh, issue which has to be dealt it dealt with at length i will not go into that but here he says here the question is raised how can a word that is used in singular number denote many things or many categories of the of a particular object or entity so you are telling makara denotes the individual soul it is samashti vadaka it actually denotes all the type all types of individual souls namely bonded souls then liberated souls and eternally liberated souls baddha mukta and nitya so such when such a question is answered by mentioning the next sutra the 68 sutra which has only one word jat ekavachanam so it is what is known as jat ekavachana so i will give an example in english which is very easy for you to understand when i say man is a social animal there is a sentence 
So here, man is a social animal means to whom does it refer to? Does it refer to Keshav Das Ji or does it refer to me or does it, does it refer to Govinda Chari or does it refer to Ram Shinas? To whom does it refer to? <laughs> it refers to everybody. <laughs> so, what does it mean? Man is a social animal. This statement essentially means all humans are social animals. Isn't it? Or if I say the elephant has a trunk. If I say the elephant has a trunk. Or if I say the lion has a mane. Then do you question which elephant has a trunk? Is the question raised like that? No. Because the elephant has a trunk, or if I say the elephant is an animal which has a trunk, it means all elephants have trunks. So this is a very, very simple example that is universally used. This concept of what is known as Jatye Kavachana is a universal concept, not limited to Sanskrit alone. <clears throat> so here, that is what he says, Aravade vrihi sammo hatte chullu hiravan idu oru nennenral andaye kavachanam jati paramana pole. So he has given a, an example that used to be referred to in those days. When a person <coughs> sees a uh, when he sees a heap of paddy or heap of rice and he says this is rice it means rice in this context is in singular but a heap of rice means heap means how many grains are there in that there are innumerable grains. <laughs> Nobody can count them individually. Suppose there is about 50 kilograms of rice that is <coughs> which is put on the floor. How many rice grains does it contain? How many grains of rice does it contain? If I ask the question, what is the answer? Nobody knows. <laughs> it might have several millions or hundreds of thousands of grains. But I say this is rice. That means I use singular. That means it denotes the all the grains of rice that are infested with riceness or that contain riceness in them. That is what is known as Jatye Kavachana. So I, if I say the elephant has a trunk, means all elephants have trunks. Or if I say the lion has a mane, all lions have manes. Similarly, many a times when the concept of Jatye Kavachana is used, even a word that is in singular number can denote many entities belonging to the same group. That is very important. Therefore, when I say Jeevatma, it encompasses all the Jeevatmas in this world. Just like when I say man is a human animal, all humans are, eh? a man is a social animal. It means all human beings are social. They live together in society. Only a person who has overcome all his desires and is established in deep communion with God he will try to be away from people, other people. Even he, when he is not meditating, even he wants to be among people. So no animal in this world can remain apart from other fellow beings, especially of the same category. <laughs> so always a human wants another human for companionship. So that is why it is mentioned as man is a social animal. Or all animals are social in nature. They want to have, so there is a beautiful statement in the Mahabhashya. 
So when the Vitishajati Padartha Antarah Kopi here. So the said uh, Patanjali, who has authored the Mahabhasha, he gives, gives a beautiful example. So when there is a stay, uh, cow pen, in that cow pen there are many animals, many types of animals. When there are sheep, there are goats, there are buffaloes, there are cows. So when they are let out to graze in the morning, all of them will go together. Goats, cows, buffaloes, sheep, etc. But when they actually spread out to graze, automatically all the cows will become one group. They will all graze together. All the sheep will graze together. All the goats will graze together. All the buffaloes will graze together as groups. And during the afternoons when they drink water and rest for a while, then also they will all separate into separate groups. So each animal wants to have a companion of its own variety, not some other variety. So these are all very beautiful things that are mentioned that we can see in nature. Anyway, that is not very relevant to the present context, but this Jatya Kavajana is very important because when I say <coughs> man is a social animal, it means all human beings are so. Or when I say this is rice, it means it is, it contains a heap of car, car, grains, which are all called as rice only, but together they are not called as a single rice. Ide orunel indal, and the ekavachanam jati paramana pole, ide vum atma jati paramana ekavachanam indai. So atma means that which consists of atmatva or what you call soulness or soulhood or whatever you would like to call it. There is no exact equivalent in English, but we can, we have some near terms that come near the meaning. And the 70, 69 sutra. Ital atma jnata vin dehatil yavrti shodnita iti. So, why is it being mentioned that it is Jatya Kavachana? And why is it being mentioned that it is the, <clears throat> it consists of all the Chetanas uh, or types of individual souls, namely bonded, liberated, and eternally liberated, Baddha, Mukta, and Nitya, respectively. Then he says, then that is explained. So the Yavriti should be tight in gay. Ital Atma in the Atma Gyata in the day had till Yavriti should be tight. So there is a use word called Yavriti. Because the word Yavriti means Yavriti means that which is different from Ithara Bheda Gyana Matera Ithara Bheda Yavriti. Gyana Vati Umayr in Dulay Makaratal. Sheshatva Shreman Atma Jnana Shre Bhutana Navanindi Achetanamana Dehatrikatil Atma in Yavriti Shodnita Iti. So, <clears throat> generally, it is very important to know why a particular word is being used in, in a particular context. So, why should the word Makara be mentioned here in this context. And why should a word that denotes knowledge and also the possessor of knowledge, you may call it as consciousness also. So why does the, why does a word that is 
denoting consciousness as well as the position, possessor of the consciousness being is being used here. So it is being, suppose I, I tell Rama is a tall person. Why am I using the word tall here? It is mentioned Visheshanama Vyavartakatva Svabhavaha Vyavartakatva Svabhavaha An adjective is always used to separate an entity from similar entities. Suppose I say this is a blue pen and I tell somebody in my house please bring that blue pen. What does it mean? Don't bring the red pen. That means I am actually separating the pen having the blue color from the pen that has other colors like red, green, yellow, etc. Similarly here, why is a word which is denoting consciousness being mentioned? It is being mentioned because ittal dehatil vyavritti shurnittaiti The seat of consciousness, the Consciousness that exists in which entity? It is the Atma or the individual soul that possesses consciousness. Therefore, it is known as Jnata. That means a possessor of consciousness. Therefore, when you say the individual soul is a possessor of consciousness or it is the seat of consciousness, to put it in the English way, it essentially means that the body is not the soul. It is not the seat of consciousness. Therefore, here, the <clears throat> in this context, it is being mentioned that the Jivatma is different from the body. And then he mentions Ittalatma Jnata Vinna Dehatil Vyavrti Shuddhita Itte this aspect has been explained in detail by me. That is what Pidaloka Acharya says. This has been explained by me in detail in the work called Tattva Shekhara. So I am not going to explain it once again in this context because it will be a repetition. But Swami Manavan Mamani knew the situation of people like us. So we don't have access to Tattva Shekhara Granta, though it has been published. And uh, we may not be inquisitiveness, inquisitive enough to go to uh, refer to that work and say what has been mentioned. So Swami Manavadu Mamani takes pity on us and he says what has been mentioned in Tattva Shekhara. So he says, Devo ham manushyo ham sthulo ham krisho ham yendri dehatil ham buddhi vyavaharangal nadavanirka ahamartha bhutamana atma dehatil vyavartanam vyavartanin shullu hirapadi tane tan yengane yenna rulichai hirar dehatil vyavarti tatra shekaratile shunnom so this is a very, very, very tricky, controversial, but very much essential issue. So when all of us use the word I or Aham, which we call as I consciousness, it generally refers to the body only. Because you say, I am fat, I am stout, I am obese, I am thin, I am a human being, I am a male, I am a female. In all these usages. The word I refers to the body only. This is for sure, there is no doubt about it because 
when I say I am thin or I am obese. The thinness refers to the thinness that exists in the body of a person. Or if I say I am obese, this obesity refers to whom? The obesity is with regard to the body only, not the soul. Because soul is neither obese nor, nor thin. So if I say I am a male, I am a female, the soul does not have any sex. Neither it is male nor female, nor it is a transgender. Just like Nabalwar says with regard to the Supreme Lord, Adalan, Pendalan, Allah, Riyumalan. So the Supreme Naivastri Napumane Shaha Nachaiva Yum Napum Sakrama. When it is being referred to the Supreme Lord, though we call him as the as the Parama Purusha, Purusha, Parama Purusha, etc. His gender is not akin to our gender. So he is neither male nor female nor transgender. Similarly, Jivatma, as it is, the Jivatma does not possess any gender. So, <clears throat> when you say I am a male or I am a female, to what does this I refer to? It refers to this body only. But on the other hand, there are other usages as well, which says my body or I know. So when you say my body, this is my body, then who is that I, which is part of that my? In those usages, the word I refers to the soul that is within the body. Because if you say my and the I that is part of the word my refers to the body only, then the meaning be it will be, we can be equal to body's body, which is an incongruous or invalid statement. So when I say my body, the I consciousness that is part of the word my. So my is the genitive case of the word stem nominal stem I. Mama, Mama Shariram. So in such usages, the word I refers to the Atma or individual soul, which possesses this body. Then when you say I know, in such a case also the I refers to the Atma or say Chetana or the soul, because that is the seat of knowledge or consciousness. Because the body cannot know. Body is not a, a chetana, it's not a sentient entity. If the body itself were to be the soul, then there would not have been a difference between a dead body and living body. So we know that Shari Rasya Nachaitam Yam Briteshu Vyavichara. That is what Nyaya Shastra says. The body cannot be a conscious entity because when a person dies, the body continues to exist, but it is not conscious. Conscious, it does not perform any function. Therefore, logically, we can establish the existence of a soul that is beyond the body. So that is why. Those who mentioned that the body itself is the soul are known as Dehatmavadis. So you have several schools of thought like Dehatmavada, Indriyatmavada, Manaatmavada, Pranatmavada, etc. Dehatmavada is the school of thought which says the soul itself is the body. Then you have the school of thought which says the Indriyatmavada, the sense organs the eye, ear, etc. That is the software part of the eye, ear, nose, tongue and skin. So there is the statement or school of thought which says if the body is not the soul, then why, why the sense organs cannot be considered as the soul? Going beyond 
why can't the mind itself be considered as a soul? Why do you accept the mind and soul as two different entities? So that is also refuted because it's not according to the fact or what is really existing, according to reality. So Vanatmavada is the mind itself is the soul, the school of thought that the mind itself can, can be considered as the soul. That is also refuted. Then there is a school of thought which says the pranatmavada. That is the pranavayu or the vital layers that enable us to give and uh, live and which make the difference between the living and the dead. Because as far as the as until the Uchwasa and Nishwasa, the inhalation and exhalation of air happens, a person is alive. Even though he may be unconscious or he may be sleeping, inhalation and exhalation happen. The moment inhalation and exhalation stops, he is dead. The person is dead. The Atma no longer stays. So why not consider the Prana itself as the Jivatma? That is also refuted. So Dehatmavada, that is the school that the body itself is the soul. Indriyatmavada is the school of thought, which says the sense organs are the soul. Manatmavada, the school of thought, which says the mind is the soul. And the Pranatmavada, the school of thought, which says the vital layers, which are known as Prana in Sanskrit. He is the soul he is also refuted because it is not in accordance with the reality. And it is established that the Atma is beyond all these things. It is beyond the body, it is beyond the sense organs, it is beyond the mind, it is beyond the vital layer known as prana. And it's a unique entity. This is how it has been explained in which has been explained in brief by Manavana Mahmi here. And it is mentioned as an extension of the Putratnavada, as an extension of the Dehatnavada, extension of the school of thought that the body itself is the soul. Swami Vedanta Deshka mentions you also have schools of thought called Putratmavada and Gehatmavada. That means some people consider their son as their soul. <laughs> some people consider their house, a physical entity, as their soul. That is why we read in the newspapers. So, due to the earthquake, his house was fully damaged. So as soon as the person heard that his house was damaged, he suffered a heart attack and he died. So he thinks that his Atma or soul is the house itself. <laughs> so when the house was destroyed, he felt he had lost, he had lost his soul. That is why he, as soon as he heard that, he died. So those people are, we are all, we know we are all Dehatmavadis. Because we are not able to cognize the soul which is beyond the body. So that is why we say we all are Dehatma Abhimanis. That means we consider our body itself to be the Atma because we have not realized the existence of an Atma which is separate from the body. But there are many people who are so much attached to worldly objects or things like this, some people like their son or wife or husband. Because when Dronacharya, of course, Dronacharya was supposed to be a highly evolved person. But when he heard that his son was killed, he no longer wanted to leave. But it is mentioned that he gave up his life on his own, on his own accord. It is a great, great, great thing. But he was too much attached to his son. 
So leaving that aside, the story of Drona Chandra. We know several. We read in the papers once again. Several instances where, when a person came to know that his son had died in an accident, he also passed away immediately. So where are the Deshka says? Further schools of thought are, which are partially true, not totally true, not totally untrue, partially they are true in the sense that. You have Putra Atmavada and Geha Atmavada, etc., which apply to certain classes of people. But in reality, the Atma is beyond the beyond relation relatives like son, wife, husband, etc. It is beyond uh, the properties that he possesses. It is beyond his body. It is beyond his sense organs. It is beyond his mind, and also beyond the prana. It is different from all these things. That is what is mentioned by Pradha Dokacharya in a very succinct manner. In the Tattva Shekhar Grantha and explained by Manavala Vami here as mentioned by me until now. Dehatilvyavrti Prameshe Karatile Shonnom was explained by me until now. Then, Manatayum, Oliyayum, Kundu, Puvayum, Rattatayum, Virumbuma, Pole, Sheshamin, Atmai, Adarikiradi, Allah, the Podu, Urianal, Kurevilum, Mingirapadi, Yajam, Adatona, Sheshat, Potential, Lipinme, Atma, Chulu Hiradi. Then, if this Atma, is beyond the body, soul, etc. Why do we give it a very important place? Why do we consider the Jivatma as very important? Then Pradokacharya answers this question in a very beautiful manner. He says, Madatayum Voliyayum Kondupuvayum Bratatayum Virumbuma Pole. So why does a beautiful lotus? Or why does a beautiful rose become so attractive? Especially we see women are very fond of rose. Or for example, jasmine. Or any other uh, flower, traditional Indian flower for that matter. Because of its wonderful organic and organic smell, which is also which also has therapeutic properties. So a flower becomes very much desirable on account of, on account of its wonderful smell or odor. Similarly, a ratna or a emerald or sapphire or a some other type of what do you call it diamond. Why does it become very much desirable? Because of its shade. So diamond has so many facets and the shades of light it produces. Beautiful, wonderful. So if a, a diamond doesn't become desirable on account of its own, on its own account, but on account of its beautiful shades of light that it, when it is passed through, you get it. Therefore, it becomes very desirable. Similarly, this Atma is very desirable because of its Sheshatva and not because of its Gyatratva. So, Manatayum, Voliyayum, Kundu, Uvayum, Ratnatayum, Virumbuma, Pore. Sheshavin, Atma, Vai, Adarikki, Radhi. So on that account only, we actually give a lot of prominence to this Atma or Jivatma. If assuming that is, it cannot happen like that, assuming that the Atma is not Shesha or not subservient to the Supreme Lord, then it is to be totally given up. 
அல்லாத போது உடியினால் குறைவிடும் என்கிறபடியே தியாஜ்யம் அது தோன்ன சேஷத்துவத்தை சொல்லி இன்னை ஆத்மாவை சொல்லுகிறது இன்ஸ்டன்ஸ் where the jivatma it's not possible at all assuming that there were a case or instance where the jivatma was not subservient to paramatma then definitely the jivatma would become undesirable it could not be a very desirable or respected object entity so just as we <coughs> admire and appreciate a flower on account of its wonderful therapeutic smell or odor just as we appreciate and desire a diamond on account of the many innumerable shades that emanate from it when exposed to light this jivatma also is desirable it becomes very close to us due to its subservience to the supreme lord if it were to happen that it was not subservient then the jivatma also would have been a object fit to be given up it would have been an entity fit to be given up therefore that subservience that relationship of subservience to the supreme god which exists in each and every jivatma makes it very much desirable it is desirable for the paramatma also because it is his own amsha ீதா கிருஷ்ணாசேஸ் either way it is correct therefore it is extremely desirable to one in all especially the supreme god also so with these words i conclude today's lecture i am little bit sorry because of the external disturbances due to which we had to have an interruption of a few minutes <clears throat> so any questions are welcome any feedback is welcome So Swami thank you uh you were mentioning that the jivatmans there are three types of jivatmans there is the uh, bada jiva can you hear me yes 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 so there's the bada jiva there's the mukta jiva and there's the nitya mukta or the nitya suri these three types of atmans yes jiva jivatmans and they're all subservient to the supreme lord so they all have the quality of sheshatva yes so my my question is uh does it also mean so since all jivatmans have the quality of sheshatva can we say also the reverse is true that all entities that are that have the quality of sheshatva are jivatmans no that does not hold true because you have achitta also which is sheshatva supreme lord so because achitta achitvas to that is ancient ancient entities okay so but that are called by the name prakriti they are also shesha so they are therefore all that is shesha is not jivatma so the vice versa is not true. so insentient insentient entities are also considered sheshatva yes of course that is why two classes are there to define the jivatma jyatratve sati sheshatvam jivatma hasmi so those that possess uh, so consciousness as well as subservience are known as jiva if you say only sheshatvam then it there is uh, it actually has the <coughs> dosha or parasya fativya or parvesha because sheshatva exists in the achetana vastu also 
if you say jnatritva is the definition of jiva then that pervades that pervades in paramatma so because paramatma also is possessor of consciousness that is why in the shastra is method of defining the jiva by her two classes that which possesses subservience as well as consciousness is called as jiva ajnatritve sati sheshatvam jiva pranah rakshanam that is what we say when we deal with this subject in a in the hardcore shastra we so um my 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 question was actually uh i'm trying to understand the 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 there are three tattvas there's ishwar tattva there's uh, there's chaitanya and achaitanya or yeah yeah Correct. so so uh mahalakshmi is does sheshatva in here in mahalakshmi and if so is mahalakshmi therefore considered part of jiva koti or ishwar koti <laughs> see i don't uh, want to be drawn into this controversy because you cannot how much ever we say unless we have the, these uh, issues can never never be resolved we of course i will not say because i, I am i belong to tenachari sampradaya i will say she is jeeva koti only and say the vadagare sampradaya is totally wrong i will not say why why sir so also because unless a person has the what we call a sakshatkara <clears throat> you cannot resolve this issue so either way there are a few problems if you say jeeva koti then there are so many problems because if you say jeeva koti then you say periya piratya arkishesham how is it possible etc some questions will arise if you say ishwara koti then there are, are there two brahmans this question is there so there are certain unresolved questions that exist in both the schools of thought so uh, you should not mistake me by saying oh he says he is uh, though he belongs to dhanacharya sampradaya he is telling there are certain unresolved questions i am now i am talking from an objective point of view not from a subjective point of view because certain problems exist in both the schools of thought so we should not highlight only one school of thought which says and say the other is wrong or something like that but say i said speaking from an objective point of view so even vedanta deshika says ಸೋಮೇವಾಹುಕ್ರಿಯಂಕ್ರಿಯಂಕ್ರಿಯಂಕ್ರಿಯಂಕ್ರಿಯಂಕ್ರಿಯಂಕ್ರಿಯಂ
so he will leave all his names and forms etc but it is mentioned that kurat arman mentioned like this that means it should not be subjected to logical reasoning so assuming that i will go there i will suppose i want now two people are there so one both of them have started from bangalore to bombay then one person will say i will go to bombay and i will welcome him there it is possible because it's in the physical world but this does not apply to the spiritual plane because in vaikuntha the even in vaikuntha if you have male female purata arvan ramanuja acharya keshava das arvan etc then what does it mean <laughs> so in parashara bhat swami parashara bhat mentions like this it should not be confused with logical reasoning then how to reconcile the fact that is mentioned in the vedanta works that the happenings in the life of a person are based on his own karma punya and papa so it is when goddess uh, mahalakshmi was founding he created her he this person therefore he is undergoing a lot of misery then that means she is partial to somebody and impartial to she is partial to somebody and actually over um uh, she favors over favorable to others it is not the case therefore you should not subject these things to pure logic because some things are not mentioned in a logical context or in a shastra context they are mentioned as what we call as swarasya to be enjoyed the rasa i don't know what is the exact translation of the word rasa so it is to be enjoyed by what is known as connoisseurs so a poetic language is different logical reasoning is different so in the poetic context these things are mentioned so suppose i say the um what is that the elephant came flying in the sky and it mentioned something to her or him is it possible practically or mythologically it may be possible <laughs> so in mahabharata you say so uh, uh, the, the arjuna went to heaven and he brought the airavata to kunti for her to perform puja how do you understand this so we have some imagination and we accept it but it is physically it is not possible or if i say dashratha used to be called by the devas to help him in the devas or in the in the uh, what is that uh, conflict or war occurred between the devas and asuras the demons and uh, the uh, demigods dashratha used to go and help him. how did he go where did he go when did it happen which if you say it is purely historical then uh, which era is it did it happen in the 2200 bc or 300 bc when did it happen how did the shastra go <laughs> so these are all mentioned in a different context in a different spirit with a different inner meaning these should not be consumed, uh, confused with logical uh, understanding so even the concept of shri etc so whether it is jiva koti or ishvara koti it's a needless uh what is the difference which can never be resolved so we go by the words of our purvacharyas respect so whether it is tenacharya sampradaya or adhikari sampradaya all of us respect god god is he is equal to god the supreme lord vishnu and worship <laughs> and we do it sure but uh, uh we are studying mamukshapati mamukshapati is uh, is a is a book by pila lokachari with a commentary by manavala mamunigal naturally it is considered to be a tenacharya yes. book no, so i'm not so, i'm so, not telling that tenacharya sampradaya is incorrect it is it is uh, 
we we give optimum respect to it and we accept what is mentioned there but sir a certain things when you go to a higher level they cannot be resolved very easily therefore we we accept the views given in the work and go by that right so what i'm saying what i'm saying is that we can also study rahasya triya saram by vedanta deshika and we 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 will definitely see there are some small differences between these two works on diff- on on yes, some yes. issues so uh, uh, i don't want to argue about those small differences i just want to understand the differences and no same thing see same thing like uh, when you have dvaita and advaita shiva and vishnu same problem is there so until today whether the jivatma and paramatma is one or the same it has not been resolved it can never be resolved because there are some two entities that are beyond our cognition so even today advaitins say they are one and the same we are telling they are different then madhva sa the madhva school of says they are totally different we have a medium uh, uh, what uh, we have a via media way of saying things then we talk about the identicalness and difference of jivatma and paramatma advaitin say jivatma does not exist at all they will say our school is correct we will say our school is correct madhva sampradaya says our school is correct but from an objective point of view which is correct then it's a totally different story altogether from which from which perspective in what context all these coming to so uh, once again shiva and vishnu shiva shiva param and vishnu param is a eternally going on uh, discussion even for that matter whether god exists or not today you have atheists and things has this been resolved <laughs> universally no <laughs> so that is why uh, recently also said uh, atheists say uh, you people say god created humans we say humans created god so what is the answer it is, it is, it is not a question that is given so i will take the your question at a higher level so there are so many higher level issues that are not to be resolved that is why you say ultimately you have the sakshatkara and then everything is resolved when you go to the state of the agnam namalvar ramam jatari right okay These i are resolved I, automatically if i have shaksha if i had shakshatkara then i wouldn't be asking any questions of course uh so but just to get back to my the original point that i was asking um it, it, d- there is there is no difference between the tenacharya sampradaya and the deshika sampradaya on the on the fact that mahalakshmi also has the quality of sheshatva to 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 shri manarayana yes, right yes yes because she okay. is the first disciple so she is the she is uh, shesha bhuta to her <laughs> Yes, good. But okay. in a different context, you say he is higher than the Supreme Lord. In a different context, so this should not be considered. Sure. Confused. Okay. So that another question I had was we mentioned you mentioned the three different types of jivatmans, right? So uh, again, some people are. What is the category? The the alwars are in which category? Are they are they nityasuris <laughs> or are they or are they muktas? uh and also the acharyas should we see our own acharya as being a mukta or a nitya suri once again uh, you have you have touched the raw nerve <laughs> so according to the idamuppatara irapadi namalvar was supposed to be a nitya samsari nitya samsariya ipon raivarai everything that means he was like a nitya samsari who is eternally bonded this is one school of thought one it is mentioned in one place in another mention place it is mentioned he is the incarnation of the supreme lord himself in another place it is mentioned he is an incarnation of vishakshana in another place it is mentioned he is the amsha or the incarnation all the acharyas or all the advars are associated with one one aspect of the supreme lord they say he is the amsha of the sudarshana is the amsha of panchajanya is the amsha of gada is the amsha of some charanga etc once again there should not be confusion among these things 
So whether they are Nitya Samsaris or Samsaris. So when you talk about the Nirhetuka Kripa or the greatness of the grace of the Supreme Lord, these people are considered to be Samsaris. And they became evolved purely on account of the grace of the Supreme Lord. Which is beyond any cause, not due to any particular reason. So from that point of view, to say they were samsaris who were liberated purely by the <coughs> unreasonable, un 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 not the correct word, beyond reason. That cannot be ascribed to any reason. By the grace of the Lord, that cannot be ascribed to any reason. From that point of view, the Advars are considered as samsaris. But when you see the greatness, when you say samsari, then they should not be equated with people like me and others. Oh, he is also, they are also samsaris like us only, what is so great? No. When you see the greatness of the Advars, from that point of view, you say they are incarnations of the various samshas or aspects of the Supreme Lord. So, from which point of view you see it? If you want to say that it's a controversy, then that's an issue. But uh, this is how it has been resolved by our poor watchers. So, also, uh, a question came up that uh, some people in uh, Tenet, especially in Tenacharya Sampradaya, we talk about Ramanuja Sambandha, that we want to, we want to, uh, we want to take Samashrayanam from uh, an Acharya who has Ramanuja Sambandha. So we want to have Sambandha with Ramanuja in some way, and that way that will help us to go to Moksha. And some people they are they are making a, a distinction between Ramanuja Acharya and other Acharyas in the sense that uh, they say one is uh, Udharaka uh, uh, Guru and, and uh, others are Upa, Upakaraka, Upakaraka Acharyas. So, so that he no, is... A... No, 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 it's not like that. See, there are two types of Acharyas. Uttara, this is not in the context of Ramanja Acharya and other Acharyas. It's not like that. As of today, all the Shri Vaishnavas are having the Ramanja Acharya Sambandha because we all have Ramanja Acharya as our Acharya. So that is why you say Asmat Guru Samarambham Yeti Shekhara Madhyama or Lakshmi Nara Samarambham Nathayam Madhyama or so these three Acharyas, Ramanja Acharya are, are common to all the Shri Vaishnavas as of today. But the, con the concept of Uttaraka Acharya and Dupakaraka Acharya has got nothing to do with this. So a person might have Samashenam from one person and he may learn the Granthas, the four Granthas that is Rasya, Rasya, Shibhasya, Gita Bhasya, Rasya and Bhagavatishya from another Acharya. Then in that context, Uttaraka Acharya is the person who facilitates moksha for this diva. And Upakaraka Acharya is who helps in a subsidiary manner. So Upakaraka means a subsidiary manner. He is an Acharya. That is, he actually cooperates with the Uttaraka Acharya. So it is in that context. It's not to do with Ramanja Acharya and others. <laughs> so it is in that context that because the person who gives the Samashrayanam or Pancha Samskara may not be able to may not be able to teach all the works in the Kalakshepa system. Then another person may teach. The person who teaches these works in the Kalakshepa method he is known as Upakaraka Acharya. The person who gives the Samashrayanam is known as Uttaraka Acharya. It is in that context that we teach. So thank you very much, Swami. So uh, Govindachari had a question, a uh, more technical question about uh, Bhakta Bimbas, uh, uh, um, the some some uh, deity form of an Acharya or an Alwar, uh, does the since uh, the Supreme Lord is uh, Vyapaka, he is everywhere. He's Vishnu. He is everywhere. He can be in all places, but the Jivatman can only be in one place at one time. So how can the Jivatman pervade the Bhakta Bimba? No, the, what we have, what we have, 
as of today is even Bhakta Bimba Pratishta is allowed. So Bhakta Bimba Pratishta is allowed and we consider that Tatma to be associated with that Bimba though they are in Vaikuntha because we consider them as Muktatmas. So Muktatmas can pervade some specific uh, locations though they are in the world, though those Bimbas are the icons are in Bhuloka. So there is nothing wrong in that. But according to Tannatari Sampradaya, there is a convention. So underline the word convention that after Manavada Mamani, we don't worship others in the form of icons. So there is a convention that we will worship the iconic form of the Acharyas until Madhavana Mamani won't be. But in uh, Vadakalai Sampradaya, they, in some places, they are having the icons of even the Swamiji's who have passed away recently. <laughs> but in Tannachari Sampradaya, we don't generally advise them. And I have not seen any any new icon of a new person who lived very recently. <laughs> so can can we say that the Jivatman, who is the Acharya, uh, he may go to Vaikuntha, but he can through Gunavyapti, he can he can yes, pervade yes, the, yes. the he can he can he can continue to because he, he has the um, he has jnana, of Satyaka, he, Satyakama and Satya Sankalpa. So he can continue to influence the Jivatma who is in this world. So that is not prohibited or ruled out. Yeah, his his quality of uh, of of jnana is is expanded unlimitedly. So he can also understand what is happening in his uh, yes, yes, form yes. in the in the temple here. Yes, yes, he can he can bless his soul though he becomes liberated. So one question, why going that? Uh, why do we have that convention? Because we consider that Manavad Mamani was the greatest of the Acharyas to have lived until now. That means greatest in the sense, after him, there can be none who can equal him. Therefore, we don't have the icons of further Acharyas after Manavad Mamani. <laughs> they might have been great, but we consider Manavad Mamani as the greatest to have adorned our thing after uh, until a particular period. So that is why in Tenacharya Sampradaya we don't do that. Swami, in the Tenacharya Sampradaya, there's this Oranvali, Oranvali uh, Guru Parampara that that like a like a garland. Yes, yes. That, correct, correct. Uh, Man Manavala Mamuni is the is the is the acharya of Lord Ranganathan. So the himself. garland was complete. Yes. So, <laughs> so, so nobody else comes yes, in there. Yes, yes. <laughs> so the garland is complete. So we we attach ourselves to the uh, flowers in the garland and we get liberated. <laughs> so very nice question observation. I congratulate you. <laughs> Okay. Thank you very much, Swami. Yes, yes. So if anybody else has any, any questions or comments at this time. Uh, Adi and Dasan, namaskar. Huh? Yeah, namaskar. Uh, Swami, I, yeah, I just have one uh, question, Swami. You had mentioned... Turn your camera here. if possible. Yeah. If possible. Yeah, actually, I have a very poor internet connection. That is the reason I no have... Problem, uh, no problem. Please go Please go ahead. So you had made a clear uh, distinction between uh, Samashti and Vyashti. And you basically alluded to the fact that, uh, you know, uh, the Parabrahman, Paramatman is more like the Samashti, the generalized, you know, the abstract universal whole, whereas we individual souls are more of the uh, Vyashti type uh, because we are like single uh, entities. You also mentioned how Lord Krishna had, you know, mentions it very clearly that each one of us is an Amsha in the Paramatman, in Perumal. Now, uh, this is one aspect that you discussed earlier. Subsequently, you also talked about the different schools of thought that exist. Uh, you know, Deham, uh, Pranam, 
uh, and uh, indriyam and all that which also means which can can it be interpreted that different people or different individuals or different souls also ascribe to these different schools of thoughts otherwise these different schools of thoughts would never have arisen number 1 yes yes surely 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 yeah so now if we are all an amsha of the lord each of the individual souls that means each of these contradictory thoughts are also amsha of the lord but you but we discuss and we say that paramatma well, is the absolute universal whole so how does this contradiction how do you reconcile correct, this contradiction correct. that yeah. he himself is a collection of different contradictions yes yes so here what happens is a very good question you have raised so here what happens is you when you don't realize that you are jamsha of the lord it can result in certain consequences like you become a dehatma adi indriyatma adi manatma adi etc so based on your uh, what do you have in mind certain things occur in the in the course of the, the journey of the jivatma as i would like to put it so until you don't realize that you are the amsha of the jiva of the supreme lord paramatma when you think the body itself is the atma when you think the manas is the atma indriya is the atma etc then you undergo several consequences in your in your life not life <clears throat> so when you are ascribing to those schools or when you believe in those vadas or when you inherently <clears throat> feel that the body itself is the soul then these things happen but when you realize that you are the, the amsha of the supreme lord then you get liberated so it's not it it is in a way it is little bit subjective because the nature of the atma and the the journey of the atma depends on your mental dispositions so that is why we say we have to understand from the works of our purvacharyas and then realize first we have to mentally understand and then by the grace of god you realize that the supreme we are subservient to paramatma so when you are not having such a mental disposition when you are having and you feel the body itself is the atma then you undergo bondage and all these things all these schools will come into play so those schools are real with regard to people who have those types of dispositions have i answered your question yes swami thank you swami namaskar swami if you are not convinced you can we can discuss next week also once again you can think no, about no. it and let me know sure thank you swami namaskaram swami ajay dramam jetye shatatura jaturakshari kamastham prapadyante jantavo antamadrsha punyam bhore vikasay papadvam takshaya icha shiman avirbhut bhumo ramam jidivakara trinikrita virinta vidinam kushavibhutayah namam japaram bhore samashrena shadinah